the short track tempers start to flare. When Jimmy Spencer and Ken Schrader get together in turns three and four, battling for second place. Spencer's McDonald's Ford goes sliding into the wall. Then on the pace lap, during the caution, Spencer lets Schrader know what he thought of the contact as he sends the Kodiak car spinning. But the NASCAR officials get the final say as they hit the McDonald's team with a five lap penalty. Here was Seat Bickle. It was the 44 Boris said apparently that, oh, look at Boris. Oh, I see what uh -huh. happened to Rich Bickle. Well, yeah, okay, he just drove up the bank and then went on. It wasn't nearly as bad as it looked from that uh, on-board shot that we had. And again, we will not comment on uh, <laughs> the circumstances involving that little incident. Let's just say that Boris was uh, waiting for him. Among others that were on pit road, and there were some issues here. Watch these. Watch the 20 and the 15 leaving here. I'm trying to think really why Tony's mad at the 15 car Paul Menard right now. Menard beat him out. Pretty fair and square. <laughs> and he's hitting him again right now. Bam, another time. Hey, don't, don't, you know, these guys are getting frustrated. The chase for the championship is already starting to heat up right now. Hey, Tony's not done with him right yet. Let's get in here and, oh my gosh, give him, a, give him another whack right there. Whoa. Now, why he would tear his own car up, I have no idea. Alan? You know, we talked about the tight confines down here on pit road, uh, guys, and, and Paul Menard is pitted in the spot in front of Tony Stewart. Well, Paul, trying to be cautious and not run over a couple of his crew guys, uh, didn't pull all the way up in his pit box, so Tony, who came in ahead of Paul, had to back up and go around him, and that's when you saw Menard pull out of his pit box and jump out in front of Tony. So Tony was a little upset that he had to stop and back up when he should have been ahead of, you know, how that all that works, Rusty. This is off turn four, so he's going to make it here. We know that. He oh, bounced off the wall again. Oh, he bounced off the wall again. And, and he kind of bounced off Jeff. Yes, he did. And Jeff said, you know what? I don't appreciate that. That's exactly what he said. Jeff Gordon's being black flagged. NASCAR officials are talking to Robbie Loomis. They're going to hold him at this point for one lap. The way it sounds, they're going to try to repair that fender damage. Jeff Gordon's comments on the radio. I'm sorry about that, guys. I screwed up. It's my fault. But he drilled me all the way down the straightaway. He's able to keep that truck running. I will never, ever, ever drive it again. I don't think Jennifer likes that truck. She used about as many evers as Kenny Wallace used yours in the command earlier. Yo, 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 yo. What was that all about? I'm not sure. I love Kenny Wallace. I think it's, I think he's a little bit excited for that job tonight. <laughs> Kenny's Great. always a little bit excited. Uh, uh, she's, she's not happy right now with the window net either. And broken some ribs, literally black and blue, all up and down his upper body with the kind of impact they had with that wall. And look how hard that car has hit. Mark's a little upset. Led some laps, and then that last stop, we uh, we screwed it up. So, uh, good day for us. Uh, third place is a good run. Uh, the two was so fast, there wasn't anybody wrong with it. So, Looks like he bumps in the back of the 28, goes on the inside of it. And the 28 car, Robert Richardson, just comes across and gets him. And boy, look at this crash. That could have been serious for a lot of guys. That was, uh, that was payback right away. Great angle by the camera crew, guys, to show us. Let's uh, take a look from Scott Wimmer's on board. Yeah, I mean, when you saw the 28 car of Robert Richardson chase him down the racetrack, get into right rear quarter panel, Kyle Krisloff, you got to believe the NASCAR is going to say, hey, I want you down to the truck. I want to talk to you guys. This is something. Well, you can see it right there on that angle. He comes all the way over. Shane Hill, that 48, he's not going to give up easy, and he should give up because we only have 15 cars on the lead lap. There you see Jimmy Vassar in the 30 car, but he gets back going. No caution. We stay green. The boy Reeves gets sideways at the start finish line, and Shane Hill gets into the back of it. He gets back on the tail of the lead lap. We're on board. They go. Lap 164. Look at the damage there to the front, right front of Ron Hornaday. That's not going to be good for this place. Let's take a look at what happened. 
This is going through one and two. There you see Shane Mill goes up the racetrack and just comes back down on Ron Hornaday. It's it's one thing to try to stay on the lead lap. It's another thing to get into the leaders like that. You understand that Shane Mill will be held on pit road for rough driving. It's October of 2006. A lot happened in there. What did happen there? Uh, David Reagan got it in the back of the 21. Spun him. Kenny Schrader was not very happy about that. What's and, he going to do with that bumper? Well, for a second, I thought he was going to throw it at somebody, namely <laughs> David Reagan. But, oh, he's just helping clean up the track. Yeah. What a good guy. Yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs>